Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Well, it's time for us to talk about the hottest anticipation week here that we've seen of 2022. It's earnings time and it's super earnings week. Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Apple, and Amazon, just to name a few of the big names, are releasing their results. And what's going to happen off the back of this could surprise you. Basically, this is the mecca of all earnings weeks. And depending on whether we break through support on the NASDAQ or S&P 500 or bull off this area could really shape the rotation that markets are going to be doing for the next week into the next few months. So let's talk about it all right now. There's a lot to discuss. Welcome back everyone to our daily market recap show here for the markets close 25th of April 2022. And as we always do, let's begin with some news, then we'll get into some macro environment stuff, and then we'll start to talk about the individual stocks going into earnings, and of course the broader market as a whole. There's so much to discuss today. We'll start off here with Twitter. Obviously Elon Musk has purchased Twitter, it looks like he has, and this is both a positive and a negative. Could be positive for Twitter, Probably. Will it be a negative though for Tesla with Elon Musk taking some of his, let's say, concerted effort away from Tesla? People are certainly scared of that concept. Let's talk about the broad market though. Fear is in the streets. We're sitting on a 40 result here for the fear and greed index. That basically means that people are a little bit fearful coming into this earnings and it's certainly manifest investing itself in price. But the day before the big one, Microsoft and Google were both up. So the markets decided to bull into the news events. What happens next? We'll take a look at that a little bit later. Basically, we have energy here. Now, this is a sector that is not doing so well, and it's showing us a certain trend. Now, as you know, we like to follow sectors in market rotation. It's a huge part of being successful in the market. Understanding that technology is not the only sector and sometimes there are other ones to be in is paramount to trading success and investing success over the longer term. Right now though, we have a big rally that came off the previous day. We rallied from down almost 2% all the way back up and the NASDAQ actually ended up 0.7% for the day, showing a little bit of risk on there in terms of sentiment. If we think about the sectors over that period of time, we had things like semiconductors, technology, consumer discretionary, all of these coming up with a decent gain for the session. If we move over to thinking about the next five days or the last five days, take a look at this chart. Amazing stuff here. What a rotation has occurred since earnings started in the metals and energy sector. The markets have dumped these zones. So basically they've said, you know what? We pushed the market up 50, 60, 70% on some of these stocks. And now we don't believe these earnings are holding our expectations. What a massive bait and switch. And money is flowing into other markets as they really dump gold, metals, and of course, energy upon poor, unsuspecting victims in these sectors. Now, could they bounce? Absolutely, but that's what they've been doing for really the last five days here. They've been consistently dumping those stocks and putting it into other sectors. So we have to ask ourselves the question, are we at a buy zone? This is a difficult question when you're in a massive earnings week such as we are. By some types of core risk models, we're not quite at that necessarily buy zone. A lot of people are saying maybe early May will hit that. If you think about midterm years, generally you do see a sell-off that comes through May into July, but we don't know whether we're on that same timetable because April wasn't that strong, yeah? When we think about 10-year bonds, daily sentiment is getting down into those levels. So again, here, we potentially could be looking at a rally point for the bond market. Now, if this occurs, this could be also good for tech. You can see it's been very consistently down here. If it starts to rally around, possibly also tech will come with it. If we think about mega cap stocks versus the S&P 500 year to date, they're all pretty bad. The S&P 500 is down 10%. We know that tech has been getting beaten the most, down 13.4 on Amazon, Google down 17, Microsoft down 18 and meta platforms down 45%. So there's so much at stake here for these big tech and they've been really draining the market at this point. We also have one other big rating here in terms of what's going on in the market and that is S&P 500 drawdown from the 50 EMA. We're under that at this stage. So if tech holdings, let's say the tech doesn't live up to expectations and we go short again, where does the next level for the S&P 500 become prevalent? The answer, generally speaking, according to stats, 85% of the time, 
we would fall into the 100 SMA. And that's sitting around 4,000 on the S&P 500 at this point. So you can see how much is at stake here into the earnings. We then look at, has the earnings been bad so far? 80% beat rate so far, beats 168, misses 42. Not necessarily that negative in terms of the current earnings beat. So of course we go on to earnings then, and this is just where things get really crazy, everybody. I mean, earnings, we've got all the big ones coming out. I mean, I, I, the whole screen's just lit up with important companies, but mostly Tuesday after the close, Microsoft and Alphabet. So let's talk about what actually moves technology stocks. And usually speaking, it's really got to do with yield. We know that yield at least initially impacts all of these tech stocks. Now, that just means it takes away some of the froth. And we've seen that come off so many of these companies so far. If we have a look here, we have the US 10 year basically showing itself at that 3% resistance. This is the point where we have potential inflection. That is the US 10 year might actually start to decline. If you believe it is, what becomes a sector that you might want to start to target? Well, the answer is going to be tech. If you believe the US 10 year is going to go higher, then you don't want to be in technology necessarily. You probably want to be out of that. So have we seen a change here in sentiment? Well, I think as you go through the timeframes, you'll notice it's kind of topping here at this stage. The two hour also could be just forming a little double top here. And again, a positive sign here for technology leading into the current earnings result. Earnings results will ultimately make the decision. But if the 10 year starts to decline, you know that money will be flowing into technology. Of course, it's not really sitting right now in something like uh, in something like energy or metals. We're seeing it flee that level and go somewhere else. Put call ratios, that's PCC, a lot of puts still in the market. We know, of course, people went incredibly negative last week. It might be in the market's best interest to therefore buy up off the supports, which is what they did over the last 24 hours. And the DXY, this is an interesting one. It pushed the last three trading days. That is money flew out of the markets, getting out of metals, getting out of energy. Remember, they really steeply declined. And also technology was dropping at the same time. So money was coming out and sitting in cash. Will that cash return back to the market? You can kind of see it clear as day here on the chart. DXY, the US dollar rising against, of course, what was declining, which is the rest of the markets. Interesting. We move over here now to some stocks. Let's get into some stocks here before earnings. So we mentioned Google was coming up. Now take a look at this chart. On the surface, if you looked at this chart and you asked anyone, you didn't tell them earnings was coming, what are they going to tell you? Well, most likely they're going to say it looks like it's short. And if it comes back up here, I'm going to try to sell it. Yeah, on the surface, that's exactly what it looks like. I mean, you see it here, support, 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 breakdown. So if it comes back up before earnings, which is where I suspect it might do, might come up to this point exactly, it's probably going to be around here leading into the end of the day. Why? Because it's an inflection point. If the earnings is bad or even if it's good and they deserve, they decide to sell it off, what a great place to sell it off, yeah? If the earnings is good, what a great place to push it through. Now, if the earnings is good and they push it through, this could really begin something in tech because you've got to ask yourself the question, what did they just successfully do? If the rally happens, they successfully effectively created a maximum pain event, getting people to short the market before earnings after it breaks through support and place short positions, very sneaky of them. So you can see how you can play both sides here. And that's why it's really important into earnings to sometimes if you're placing your bets, if you're placing positions to understand that there's a heavy level of risk and a heavily level of uncertainty. And until you see the certainty, whether it goes the bullishness and you've got that kind of max pain or it goes bearish and you get the new low, that those points you can make much better informed decisions and get a greater clarity on your trades. Microsoft's kind of similar, previous supports, You'll notice the weekly close below again, kind of a max pain. Imagine if the market closes this week above that high here. Wow, wouldn't that be huge? Now you might think, well, I've missed out on the opportunity. Well, if that happens, it's kind of telling you, and especially if the US 10 year goes down, it's kind of telling you the rotation into tech is really there. And regardless of what other people are saying, that's what the price action is telling us. Now, conversely, if the market goes to a new low, it will snap all these supports off after earnings. And of course, where's the next level for it? It could be as low as something like 
a 228, which would be consistent with what we see in the markets a little bit later when we look at it. So Microsoft right around that support becomes resistance. Facebook is the exact same concept. It's shorted heavily because of the negative sentiment into this market. It's made a new low, taking out stop losses right ahead of earnings. They're sneaky. They know exactly what they're doing. And this is a mixture of algorithms and just standard manipulation traps. And you can see again, what's it done? Taking out people's stop losses from trades over here. And after the earnings, we probably will get more clarity on what Facebook wants to do. Max Payne currently involved in a trade or is it further shorting about to happen? We'll find out very, very soon, I'm sure. PayPal is no different. You take a look at PayPal coming into earnings this week. New low, imagine if that reverses strongly back up. Has Max Payne been caused? Absolutely. Taking out huge amounts of shorts, are putting in a lot of shorts in, taking out a huge amount of buys and really ruining everyone's time over here. So earnings will be paramount for again, something like PayPal and a lot of hyper stocks. Because as we go through those, you're gonna to start to see a very similar concept. Apple's another one, it's rallying up. Again, if Google kind of rallies and Microsoft rally over the next you know, Asian session into London session into the open and the day, where do we expect Apple to go? Well, I wouldn't be surprised at all before those other earnings results for it to be sitting around 164. At that point, you've got previous support becoming resistance and of course a key level where after hours when we see Microsoft and Google release their results, we're going to now make a decision. Do we go long and it was all so simple or will we go short, bust down to a new low and then upon Apple's earnings result, which will probably be sitting at that point around that 155, we really figure out whether this market's going to tank completely, putting a lot of pressure on the NASDAQ there. So again, this is a big inflection point here around this 164, it looks like for the markets. Amazon similar, 3000 is a huge level. Let's go down to the daily here for Amazon, coming a little bit later in the week, Thursday here for the result. Where have we got a huge level? 3000, support, 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 support. It breaches underneath. At this point, we could rally to 3000. What do we think happens here? The bears are gonna to try to take control of the market again and push it down. If the earnings result is good enough and it can push back through, it's created another maximum pain style scenario before potentially going along. And at that stage, you're starting to say, is the US 10 year coming down as well? If it is, maybe it's another checkbox for you. So the bulls and the bears have great cases coming into this earnings. The problem is we don't exactly know which direction it wants to go just yet. We don't have that information coming out. The market's bulling into the event, but as we know, it's bulling into roll reversal. What a pain in the ass. They're very smart like this, aren't they? Let's have a look at ARK, another one testing support before the earnings of the big tech stocks. Of course, this will really make or break it. If it makes a new low, pain train. Uh, it could go even lower at that point because the NASDAQ will also be dumping. And this is really, again, what's at stake. Now, we'll move over here to Tesla. I thought I'd include it. Oil and gold will resume in our normal trading kind of videos, but I did want to bring this up. So it rallied throughout the day. It held that level of support again. We were doing the video and we did the live stream. Thank you very much for attending that. And we found that, of course, we know this is a huge support. If Tesla breaks underneath, that is a very negative sign for it. And we go towards that 940. Nothing's really changed here. We're in the trap zone, but I think you do need to be aware that people in the market are not necessarily gonna like the Twitter purchase that much. They're gonna say, well, is Elon's time getting taken away with all these projects he's doing? I mean, he's a madman when you think about how many projects he's doing now, Twitter, uh, Tesla, obviously Skylink, all these other things. And um, it's just going to be, I don't even know how he does it. I have no idea how he does some of these things. Let's move over to IWM, the Russell 2000. Again, bouncing off support. You can see what's at risk here. If the bears are right and the market hates these results, we've got Wyckoff, distribution, into short, into obviously a coil. If we breach underneath here, you can almost imagine where the next level is going to be about 170. Why? Because 170 is the previous resistances of 18 and 20. It's the most logical conclusion after this point. So, so much at stake here again for IWM. The same for the US 100, it bounced off the support. Bang, bounced straight off the support. Where's it going towards? Well, the highlighted zone that we mentioned in the previous session. The reason is because that's where the sell the rip comes in. So imagine if we rallied into this point, see how they're all kind of connected? 
They really are. They're very sneaky like this. So we have that previous support. We dumped through that area. We rally back into it ahead of the earnings. And depending on the earnings, we either fly high or we sell right back off, put pressure on, and then all of a sudden things are looking very, very bad. This really comes back with things like the VIX as well. What's the fear looking like in the streets? And it's sitting about 27. So it's actually come down in the last 24 hours. It went from about 31 all the way down. Of course, bad earnings result or the market doesn't like tech. I expect that to jump right back up, possibly hit something like a 35 very soon. Let's move over to the S&P 500 here for a second. Did that come off a of support? Well, it hit 4,200 and then it bounced off that level. So it's bouncing fairly hard. It's kind of closed around that previous little bit of resistance at 43 and probably rally a little bit with the NASDAQ leading into again these earnings results. That's the idea that the market has. It's going to be at a critical point right before the earnings happen. That's usually what occurs in these markets. Now, if we breach to a new low, this is where things get really bad. Remember, there's a high statistical chance that we move to the SMA 100 on the weekly. So let's just quickly change this. This is a 200 at the moment. We'll change that to 100 so you guys can see. We'll go to the weekly. If we make a new low, bang, straight into 4,000. Very high statistical chance here to get to that zone. And this is a very key pivotal point a lot of people use 100 in the markets. Previous big level, 4,000, obviously the next key. So it's so much at stake again from the earnings results here. Max Payne brings us to around a 440 for the week close so far with options. This will change each day. And we're trading around 428. So again, Max Payne getting very, very close. We'll move over to Bitcoin. I won't really mention this too much because I think this is already a pretty long video and we've covered a lot. We know the earnings is really where it's at. Bitcoin moved up because of the risk on attitude of the last 24 hours. It doesn't look that strong on the charts. It does have a bunch of wick purchasing over here, which could be all traps. As we know, if it breaches through 4,200 with the closure in the future, I think you'll have much more of a smiley face if you're a Bitcoin crypto trader, because at that point, you've snapped previous resistance, resistance here in terms of a closure, and you've put some serious traps in play. But the next 24 hours will probably define Bitcoin as well for these markets. If you haven't already, follow us over on Twitter. We do post here regularly, so please do follow us. We're almost at 5,000 followers, so appreciate that. And in terms of main news for the week, it's really just earnings. We've got advanced GDP on April the 28th, and we also have core PCE price index, 8.30 a.m. New York time Friday, the 29th. So look, there's a little bit of news, but really it's all about earnings. They're all going to most likely be at role reversal into the result, and then we'll find out our future. Please subscribe if you enjoy the channel, and we're going to be following along this story throughout the week. It's an exciting week, but for some people, it's also a scary one that they want to stay out of. Thanks so much. See you soon. Bye for now.